you watch my last video in reference to the battery upgrade on my new Lance travel trailer, I talked about how I wanted to put a solar panel installation on the roof. Well, I just so happen to have a couple 200 watt, well, I should say that, a couple 100 watt solar panels for a total of a 200 watt system that I've been lying around in the garage for a couple years waiting to have a project. So I've got these two 100 watt uh, solar panels that are like purchased on Amazon years ago. And they came with cables, and these regular MC4 connectors. And it came with a cheap uh, charge controller that I'll be using. So my Lance is actually pre-wired for solar. And it's got a input on the roof that fits these connectors. So it shouldn't be too hard of a project with what I have here. And then it just terminates near the battery, so you have to install the charge controller. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'll show you how easy it is to do, just in case you have a similar setup. A lot of campers these days are coming pre-wired for solar. And I'm not talking about the Furion connection on the side of the camper. It's a little more of a gimmick just to charge your battery if you want to buy their overpriced stuff. This is truly wired for solar. So the first thing I need to do is put, I'm going to mount all these brackets on the panels themselves, that way they're ready to go on the roof. Once I get all these uh, brackets mounted, I'll go ahead and take them up there and see where we're at. Alright, here's what it looks like with the brackets installed. And we'll go set them up on the roof. Alright, so I'm up on the roof here, and you can see uh, I got the panels laid out. Pretty much the only way they're both going to fit up here. The nice thing is the cords just barely reach the one from the panel. So here's what my solar prep looked like. This Go Power solar electric preparation kit, and it terminates to the MC4 here. And then I just got a parallel splice kit right here that came with the two panels. Everything just plugged in, it literally took two seconds. So all I need to do now is I'm gonna make sure I got my power down there right and then I'll have to screw these down to the roof. So after you screw them down, obviously you need to put like Dicor, you know, like self-leveling sealant on it to protect it. That'll be nice and easy. So yeah, I think it looks pretty good. All right, so in my Lance 825, the wires for the solar panel where they come down, it's different in everybody's camper. Sometimes it's behind your, uh, sink near the stereo above the sink whatever in my case they're right they were just shoved up in the wall and it was confusing me because i couldn't figure out where they were at uh, and there was this one like i said that came out in the battery box but it didn't wasn't actually from the solar panels um there but i did find these two wires just shoved up in the wall here after i took these access panels off and the black the one with the black tape on it is the one from the solar panel and the red one just back feeds over to here and the ground is already grounded and this will just be connected to our positive terminal block here after we get the charge controller installed. So I'm gonna, in my case, you know, you can mount your charge controller a lot of different places. I'm just gonna mount it down here in the battery area because it doesn't, mine doesn't even have a screen on it. Just a couple of LED lights and I'll be able to tell it's charging by the readout on the trimetric there. All right, so up here on the roof, I'm finishing everything up. Like I said, it was a very quick installation because I put the solar panels in a way that the cords from the solar panels themselves were able to reach the connection. So I got a panel there, panel here towards the front, and then they both come down, come together. And there's sometimes, there's different reasons why you'd want to run a panel in a series or parallel just depends on the type of charge control you have if i had a uh, one of the newer style expensive charge controllers i'd be running these in series because it can handle higher voltage but i'm going to be running them in parallel so they're both basically like connected together to feed the charge controller all right so here on the inside i'm getting ready to wire up my charge controller i'm going to go ahead and mount it down in here next to the battery. I'm going to actually be installing an on-off switch 
so I can shut the power down coming from the solar panels easily to the charge controller if I need to work on it or just want to turn it off. And I already have a battery switch right here that controls, disconnects the battery power from the camper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the on off switch for the solar. I'll put it like a nice little label on it. But I'm going to mount that right here so I can easily reach down and flick that switch on or off if necessary. So I'm making connections to, this is the battery connection now. You want to make sure that your connection to the battery from the charge controller is fused and the connection coming from the solar panel is also fused. And if you hook an inverter from your charge controller or battery, it needs to be fused as well. Just fuse everything. Now you figure out your fuse rating. Since this is a 20 amp charge converter, we'll put a 20 amp fuse on the line to the battery and then from the solar panels there's a formula to figure it out but I worked it out to be on mine I'm just going to put a 30 amp fuse on the line from the solar panels give it a little bit of safety margin I like to solder all my connections instead of just using crimp because it always works a lot better I'll have the input from the solar will go to the switch we just made. There. Right, here's our in or out from the solar, so we'll connect it to the switch. Put the fuses in. Battery fuse first. Just turned on the charge controller since it's connected to the battery. Depending on your charge controller, you have to go through the setup. This one's a really simple one, it just shows it has battery power. If I flip on the panels, Now the red light is on, indicating that the solar panels are producing power. All right, so since I have this tri trimetric uh, battery monitor here, I can actually watch and show you what the solar panels do. Even though it's extremely cloudy out right now and they're not really doing much, if I switch it over, this is how much power is being consumed right now. So as you can see, it's negative 3.5. And I believe it's it's not amps. It's it would probably be like 350 milliamps right now. The only thing really running is a carbon monoxide detector. Now if I switch on the solar panels, you'll see the number go from negative where it's using the energy. And you can see it's jumped way up positive. Then let's change it just to voltage, 12.8. If I flip the solar panels off, it's not really gonna change because like I said, the solar panel, uh, the charge controller is only putting out 12.8 volts right now. It doesn't have enough to quick charge the batteries. There's not enough sun at this point. But like I said, we can see it that we're actually gaining energy versus losing it with this monitor here. All right, so to wrap this all up, I have this solar kit that has been uh, sitting in the garage for a couple years. Obviously you can get a much better charge controller, the MPPT style, and um, you can get better solar panels, whatnot. But 200 watts of solar with a couple of six volt golf cart batteries is actually a pretty good combination. And for that little amount, a um, pulse width modulation, uh, charge controller, is more than adequate and when you combine that with the trimetric uh,
battery monitor that I already had, which uses this shunt right here. So if any of you are looking to install something like this, it, it can monitor this solar uh, setup pretty well. But, you know, watching whether you're in a surplus, and it'll actually show you the top green light there that's charging. And then if I, right now it's just charging off of the solar panels that are on the roof, even though I have some lights on. So if I turn on a fan and the incandescent 12 volt bulb, you can see now I'm no longer charging, I'm using power, just barely. So now the batteries are draining. If I flip the fan off, See, it goes back to where I'm now on the positive and it shows I'm charging again. You can also um, select if you want to see the percentage of your battery. So we're at 94% right now. And you can just monitor your voltage also. So as you can see, we're up to 13 volts now. So the panels are putting out, our charge controller is putting out 13 volts. If I flip it off, we'll drop back down just a hair battery voltage. Flip the panels back on. So we jump up to 13 volts. So maybe you learned something. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.